Hello, everyone, and welcome to another super cool radio interview. I'm your host, Matthew Thomas. Thank you so much for tuning in. I have a great guest joining me at this time who I'm excited to have on the podcast. On September 20th, Tara Hu released a brand new album entitled The Last Chase and recently concluded a tour supporting The Exploited and Total Chaos. Please welcome the founder and creator of Tara Hu, Tara Carpenter. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, it's nice to have you on the podcast. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Of course. I know we had quite a bit to discuss with Tara Who, as I said, the, uh, the new album, the tour, and all of that. So kind of diving into uh, the new album, The Last Chase. So like, how did, how was it writing and recording the album? Um, you know, I just had things to say. <laughs> you know, I wanted um, I wanted to write it. I, I initially, it was supposed to be an EP. I didn't have much, and I wanted to record. I, I wanted a new team, and uh, I was looking initially for a female producer. I just wanted to change things up a little bit, um, and and I had a few people in mind. And then, as I was writing and the sounds that were coming out, I was like, "Shit, um, Alan Johannes actually is perfect for this." I wonder if I can, I wonder if he would be into it. And so I reached out to him and he responded and, um, and he was like, yeah, I love it. Let's do this. And the funny thing was that it was, we were both on tour and, uh, and so we were trying to fit it in our schedules. And, um, and the thing is, um, initially he had said, uh, let's just do it when I'm back in California. But that was like month away and i'm 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 not very patient <laughs> and so and so i was like no no no, no this is good i said i don't mind traveling so we, we considered doing it in chile and then um and then there was just this uh, studio in portugal and we just happened to have this uh, tour in france and i was like oh wait we can do this and so that's that's how we recorded that um first uh, part of the album and then, and then, as soon as got as I got back, I wrote more songs, and I was like, "Hey, where are you? <laughs> Let's make it an album." <laughs> so yeah. All right, on. So a, a very cool experience. So, um, have you recorded music in Portugal before? Or was that like a first experience for that? No, it was the first time. I've I've recorded everything in LA um, so far. I've done a few things in France with another band, but uh, now it was my first time in Portugal or Spain, for that matter because the other part was in Spain. Very cool, very cool. So like, um, so obviously, so a, this is a different uh, like writing and recording experience compared to previous Terra Who material. Yes. All yes. Right on. The, the other ones were, I'm sorry, the, the yeah. other ones were, um, well, we did one during COVID. So I was just uh, sending tracks to uh, Koali at the time, who was the drummer. But, uh, but, it's um it's been like this for a while where anyway i just write the songs and i make demos um you know with drums bass guitar a few backing vocals some ideas on the guitar on the second guitar that i have so i've been doing this for years so even though it was different the demos are always the same because when i introduce that to the musicians who are going to play on the album they play what I recorded. And then sometimes, you know, they bring some ideas and, you know, we discuss them. And then of course, when we record, um, there's always the um, improvisation part and, you know, so. All right, on so uh, some very cool process, obviously for, you know, the whole writing and recording experience with the album, I've had the opportunity to listen to it. I very much enjoy it. Cause I mean, and maybe uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but feels like there's kind of like a concept or kind of like a theme like throughout the whole album. Is that correct? Kind of. Um, 
it wasn't meant to be like that, but I, I see what you mean. Because as I listen to it as, you know, sometimes I, I like to listen to it and try to, to take myself apart from the project just to see how people might be receiving it as, um, you know, it's, I, I always try to do that, you know, I'm like, oh, okay, so let's see, I don't know myself, <laughs> you know, okay. and, and I, I think I could see that um, as well. Yeah. That was just like my, you know, my interpretation with um, with listening to the album. Definitely, at least some overlapping themes, at least some of the songs, like uh, throughout the album. But overall, I I very much enjoy it. Like I've I've listened to it a few times in preparation uh, for this interview. And what I really like about it is like it flows very nicely for like the you know from the intro all the way to the the, the last song. Nice, thank you. So now, like I'm so I'm curious. Like I I love the artwork for the album. I think it looks kind of like an action movie. Like it just has like, you know, the vibrant colors and the imagery and stuff. So like, how was it like, you know, uh, putting the artwork together? Um, <laughs> so it, it was, it was kind of funny because, um, so I have, uh, I have a friend, her name is Angie and she's been doing the artwork for Tara who for the longest time. And, and so I was telling her, I have a crazy idea. I just don't know how to say it to you, but I kind of want something more futuristic. And, you know, as I was going through the titles of the album, I was like, oh, I wonder what I'm going to call it and everything. And then I, <laughs> I used AI and I was like, oh, I wonder what they're going to come up with. And there was nothing that I really liked, but, um, but I did pick some things from a few ideas from AI. I was like, okay, so I like this from AI. I had like this, 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 and then, and then, and then she put all of this together. And then she also added her stuff. But you know, the last chase is about the music industry. Oh, <laughs> you know, shocker. And so I was like, yeah, I really want, I really want like, you know, you know, men with briefcases, but like, you know, sharks, you know, and like, so all of those like metaphors that you can find that we're, when we mentioned the, the music industry are on the album. And, um, and then when I was recording, Brian, who's making a documentary about Tara, who was there as well. And, and he photographed me, um, actually was on a drum, on a drum throne, but I was like, okay, so I'm going to be on this because I, I love muscle cars. And so I was like, I'm going to be on this muscle car fighting the music industry. Okay. And so, so he took a picture of that, sent it to Angie and then Angie cropped it and put it in the world that she created, um, for the cover. You know, kind of hearing the artwork and the explanation behind it, the, it makes more sense now, like, you know, with the, not only the artwork, but the music and, you know, the commentary on the music industry in general makes a, like I'm connecting all the dots and it all makes a lot more sense to me now. Cool. Nice. Yeah. It's funny because, um, you know, with, um, so we were touring with life of agony and prong and then we noticed that, uh, cause a lot of people, uh, put us in different categories like punk or metal. We don't feel like that, you know, like you have actual metal bands and punk bands and we're nothing like them. But I think because the vibe that we, you know, um, give on stage is so much more, you know, well, lightly and angry, you know, I think that's where we get that from. But anyway, so back to prong, I was noticing their, their vinyls. I was like, Ooh, metal guys like colors. And that's how I, <laughs> I told Angie, like, put some colors in it, <laughs> put some colors in it. They like colors. <laughs> you know? So yeah. <laughs> That's a it's a hey, great marketing research and strategy with that. <laughs> yeah, like when you get bored at the merch table, you're sad noticing things. <laughs> oh, for sure, I, I I believe it. I believe it. Shifting gears actually a little bit. So we're talking about the writing and recording side, but also I do want to talk about the performance side as well. Since you know, talk about touring. So um, do you prepare like mentally prepare differently to like perform live compared to recording music? Um, I think when I record, I only want the people who are going to be recording that day in the room. If you're not part of the recording, I don't, I don't want anyone there. Um, and I think live, I want the opposite. You know, I need my people. I don't need any other people, <laughs> you know, but I need my people. 
So, you know, like, so that, that obviously that's Nico, Ash, Lisa, and I, that's the four of us, Vince, when he's around, but also like Brian, who's been doing the documentary, like I need him or I need my entourage because it's like, it, I don't know, it, it just creates a, a vibe and then like some kind of like strength, you know, and we're all in the same, like, you know, and um, yeah, it's just, it's just us. And it doesn't have to be a green room because the last tour we had, we did not have green rooms but it, it just needs to be like us united in the same mental um thing you know oh for sure i but i, I asked that quite a uh, question quite a bit but I, I i like your response with it because um you know it makes a lot of sense obviously because like obviously they're two different you know writing is different you know, recordings different from uh performing live but you know still having you know the people around you and you're performing live or getting ready to perform live it does help. It does, you know, get you in the mindset to then take the stage. Yeah, and you know, I've I've learned a lot on this uh, tour uh, specifically too, because you know, as as I went along, you know, you, you think you need something, for instance, alcohol or, or like a gummy or like you know, like you think you need certain things, and then on this tour, actually, I just realized I just didn't need anything. I just needed my people, you know. And then turned out it was one of the best tours. I had a lot of fun and, and each show was just really fun, really, really fun. And, and I think that was because, you know, honestly, we didn't even have, <laughs> okay, so that's a little bit like between us, but we didn't have any writers, you know, it was, it was very limited. And at first we were kind of like, why we're not even getting a beer? That's messed up, you know? But then, you know, and, and you know, it's, it gets expensive. So we didn't drink much because of that. But then we realized actually we don't need any of that. And we were pro, <laughs> we were sober by default, you know, <laughs> and, and we had just more fun, you know, because we're just, you know, we're using each other as a trigger to, you know, get pumped, you know, and um, that was cool. And, and then also as a result of that, we're not, exhausted the next day and when we only had three hours to sleep because we had a long drive we could just get up and go you know so it was cool interesting well yeah it's a definitely a different like perspective when like with stuff like that so like was this like the first tour where like you know a situation like this has happened for you guys that like you didn't really drink or you know do anything like that yeah um so in Europe, they treat you right. They treat you really well. They, you have catering, you have like a fucking buffet of like, you know, you're just like, yeah. And then what we usually do is <laughs> we pack it up for the next day so that we don't spend, you know. And then we usually, you know, we have a rider and then we have like, we want beer, we want whiskey, we want this, we want that. And, and we, you get it all, you know. And the thing is, you know, we say all of this, but we rarely drink, you know. So, so we, we end up accumulating. It kind of is stupid because, you know, when you're like on a 30 day tour, like the first days you're like, yeah. And then you just take it all. But then, but then you have to get rid of things because actually you just, we don't consume that much. It's stupid, you know? And so, and so, uh, with L7, say we, we had a lot of things, but usually in the US it's kind of known in the US and the UK that you don't get anything at all, especially at the support band. I'm not talking about when you're headlining. But as a support band you don't get anything. You're just lucky to be there, you know? And so it was a little bit difficult on that end because, you know, it's 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 a lot. But but we played with it. That's the thing that's that's good with, you know, the band is that instead of complaining and just focusing on that we played with that, you know, and, 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 um, yeah, I was lucky to, to have the right people with the right attitude to, to go through this. Oh yeah, that definitely, that helps out a lot. You know, like, um, yeah, I just said people, good attitudes, it makes any situation like just so much better, at least you know, from my experience as well. Exactly. Yep. So, but I am curious. So obviously uh, I talked about the, the tour with the exploited and total chaos and you guys were supporting them. So like, how was the reception at shows? I'm very curious. Cause obviously we're talking about like, you know, genres and stuff like that. So I'm curious, like how did people receive you at these shows? So I'm not going to lie. I was shitting my pants before going uh, on tour because I was like, they're going to hate us. <laughs> you know, I listened to exploited. I listened to total chaos. I was like, Oh my gosh, 
why did we accept to do this? You know, so obviously I did the set list that would, you know, that was harder and more like punk, but still it's not, it's still not total chaos or, or the exploited. However, gosh, we were, people loved us. And what we've heard at every single show was, we love that it was different. Uh, we love that you were two women fucking badasses, you know, rocking out the stage. Uh, and actually they were like, it's funny because it's not punk hardcore, but it's fucking heavy. And then a lot of people also mentioned that they um, listen online. It has nothing to do with the live show. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy I decided to come early to see you guys. Because they liked the, the the listening to the album, but the performance is completely different. Well, I'm very happy to hear you guys wow. received very well in the tour. Like, I, I was that was the question I was the most curious about because I'm familiar with you know all three of you guys. So I was like, it's interesting combination, and I I mean, as I would enjoy it. I know for sure I would enjoy it. So I'm glad other people uh, did as well. Very much. Yeah, we did really well on merch. Like you know, we were depending on the merch. And, and uh, you know, to, to keep going. <laughs> and so, um, and we did well. So that was, that was, that was great. It's like, also I was, um, I didn't know. So when we opened for Life of, uh, Life of Agony and Prong, what we noticed is that the, um, the crowd's age also depends on how well you do on merch because of uh, finances, you know, just, just what happens. When we opened for Wednesday 13, we had a younger crowd. And so it's not that people didn't like us. It's just that the, the funds I think were limited. You know, they paid for their ticket. They paid for their beers. They want the merch from the headliners and the other bands. So we're last, you know? And, um, and so this is like the exploited. So it's like an older crowd, but total chaos is like more our crowd and punk rockers. They just want to, they want to support. You know, the, the, we had also a donation jar um, because, you know, we're very aware that, you know, especially now, if you cannot afford a t-shirt, it's totally fine. But if you want to give a couple bucks, you know, it does help and it adds up, you know, and we had a lot of people who, if they couldn't buy a t-shirt that was $25, they still gave us like five, you know, and again, it adds up. And so now it was, it was really, really it was good. It was good. People really, really liked us. And punk, punk rockers, um, they want to support. They love live music. They showed up for the support bands. Even if we had local bands before us, they showed up. And, and the difference, too, is that when they like the music, they show it. And, and we've been to places where it was more like, all right, show me, show me what you have, you know? And um, we didn't have any of that. You know, I'm really glad to hear with that. And, you know, I've seen like some, you know, photos and videos from the tour and it looked like it was a lot of fun uh, with everything, but also going with you, what you said about the merch too, that yes, it is, you know, demographics do, you know, it does matter uh, with, with that. And I never really thought about that until it actually makes a lot of sense, but I'm glad that people, even if they, you know, couldn't afford, you know, certain items that they still made donations because, you know, it, it helps, but it puts uh, gas in the gas tank to keep going. Yeah, we even had people because um, we, we have a, a PayPal also on the website. And when I mentioned it online, I would get like a little ding, you know, like, oh, wow, someone who didn't make it to the show just donated. So that, that was that was really good. And, 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 a, and another difference was women uh, on this tour that were punk rockers. Um, gosh, it's, it's kind of funny. I, I don't really know how to put it. But because it's not against metal either, it's just different. But there, there's a little bit like more pride almost. Like they don't, they don't mind showing how much you know. They're like, oh my god! And guys, guys showing that they like girls is 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 more. It was more present on this tour. You know, we, we we've done some shows where even though they liked us, they just couldn't say it. You know. Yeah, no, I, I know what you mean with that. And um, 
Yeah, but which I'm, I'm glad, you know, it, it, there is like some differences with the like punk and metal a little bit with stuff, but I'm, I'm glad again that uh, people showed their support and showed that they like you guys with everything. It's cool to see and definitely obviously experience for you guys. Yeah, and, and I think another great thing was between the exploited and Total Chaos and us, there was never ego. You know, from day one, it was just like, oh, oh, oh. You know, it was more like, okay, let's try to decipher what Wadi is saying right now. You know, like, did you get it? Did you get it? Did you get it? You know, but as, no, there, there was never, we never felt like little or smaller, you know. So that was good. I'm, I'm glad to hear with that as well with, you know, Torin, that there wasn't, you know, you know any issues with that. And um, they treated you guys right with everything. So I'm, I'm very glad with everything that it went, you know, sounds like it went very smoothly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we're really happy. But, you know, it doesn't mean the other tours were not like that. It, it was just, you know, I just got back from this tour, you know. Yeah. We both had good experiences, you know. But that really stood out. Oh, for sure. So I'm, I'm curious, and then I will be transitioning to the, uh, the future plans for Terra Who, but, like, I'm curious. So on this tour, they just concluded, what were some, like, the highlights, like, outside of the shows, like traveling or anything like that? Honestly, um, the highlights for the people who came up to us after the shows, I've had like this father who um, who insisted on talking to me, which I never mind, you know, but it, that was because he wanted a picture with me for his autistic daughter, you know, who loves uh, one of our songs called Manners. And I was like, oh, wow. And so he, he came because his daughter's uh, five years old. She's autistic and, and she loves Tara Who. And so he he took he took a bunch of merch for her, and um, and and he told me that she really connects to our music, and obviously it got me thinking. Oh, I wonder because her favorite song is "Manners." I wonder. I know she's only five, and I'm not a mother, so I don't really know what five years old five year old understand, you know. But it's a song about kindness and love, you know. Um, and I wonder if she gets that somehow. You know, I'll never know, but you know, it, it kind of like, so there was that, there was another woman who, you know, was diagnosed with MS, like severe MS, and she, she has not been able to walk or do anything. And then for the first time in months, she, she came to the show because she could not miss the exploited. And then she saw us, she saw two women. It was like, like the best night of her life, you know? And this other guy, he, he her daughter, is in remission of cancer, you know, she she's learning how to play the guitar. It's like, it's like this whole thing. It's like, we had so many stories. Um, almost every night we had like someone who had like someone who wanted to share a very personal story. And it was, it was something else, you know, it's good. It's, it's, it's more than just making music and sharing it. You know, it's, I don't know. It's something, you know, to describe <laughs> no no first i know I, I understand what you mean with that and just so cool that like you know they made connections with that that you heard these incredible stories and that the people that like came out to the shows had a great time you know uh, seeing all the bands perform yeah that's, yeah that's really cool yeah i think i think um and it's 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 nice that they wanted to share it it's nice that they did share it you know, we had people in line at the merch because they insisted on wanting to share those stories, you know. So somehow we also gave that vibe that we could listen to that story. Does that make sense? Like, Yeah, they, they felt comfortable sharing the, sh the stories yeah. with you guys and wanted to. Yeah, and which I love, obviously, you know, so. That is, it, yeah, I would appreciate you sharing because that's just so cool to hear. Like, just tell, you know, through music that, you know, the people like shared those stories with you guys and, you know, waited in line at the mercy of it. Just incredible to hear. Yeah. Yeah. It was a first. On, it was a first, you know, <laughs> we usually we're, we're always at the merch, you know, like pictures, signing and whatever, but like this tour, like the, the amount of people who wanted to share a very personal story was incredible. Oh, for sure. For yeah. sure. Well, I hope I uh, hope that continues for you guys with the with the future tours as well. Yeah. 
So now, uh, as we're starting to close this interview out, so I'm, I'm curious for you guys, obviously you got the new album out, you just wrapped up a tour. So like, what is like the rest of 2024 and early 2025 looking like for Tara Who? Well, uh, so when you release an album, it's never really done. <laughs> now, now it's out, but um, now I'm, 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 I still need to push it and make sure that, you know, it's out there and that people, you know, hopefully like it, share it and all that. So I'm going to be doing that. Um, I have some ideas for, for new music and of course, um, trying to hop on new tours or festivals and continue the journey, you know, <laughs> try to get some, some new stuff. Yeah. It never ends. <laughs> no, no, the grind never stops. No, 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 no. <laughs> well, I very happy for you guys it sounds like you guys you know hopefully uh, continuing this momentum i look forward to uh seeing what else you guys have in the works as well and hopefully i get to catch you at a show sometime yeah that'd be great. where are you uh so i'm based in india in northern indiana oh really nice yeah cool. yeah so it was funny um the liars club show you guys had uh, i was actually in chicago for a separate show i saw that and i was like i can't make it but i really wanted to ah that was a good one yeah, Li Liars Club is like one of my favorite venues. Just the I just like the whole like vibe and aesthetic of that place is so cool. And the patrons are so nice. Oh my god, it was it was I, we had a really nice time. Yeah, for sure. I bet. I bet. But now uh, wrapping up this interview. So uh, for anyone watching and listening, uh, if they want to check out or support Terra, who where are the best places online to do that? Um. Well, the website. If you want to donate. <laughs> because it always helps you know even when the when even when we're not on tour it helps you know getting more merch it helps you know just just continuing what we're doing um and um honestly instagram i i can't i i it's already a lot you know <laughs> i'm banned from facebook i don't do tiktok i don't get it um and then the other ones i just don't know so yeah instagram is where i, I do everything well, very good. I will, I will leave some uh, links for Terry Who in the description of this podcast. Please check out and support them. The uh, new album, Last Chase, is a, is out right now. Make sure to give it a listen as well. But Tara, thank you so much for uh, chatting with me here on Super Cool Radio. No, thank you. Thank you for that. For, for Tara of Terra Who, I'm your host always, Matthew Thomas. Thank you so much for watching and listening to Super Cool Radio. And remember, stay frosty.